Bedford is just throwing strikes, trying to get guys out and manage your pitch count well and establish a good rhythm today. Cam Canarella will lead things off for this second ranked Clemson Tigers team and lines one right over the head of Hanks and quickly the Tigers find themselves on the base paths. Well, if you're gonna throw strikes, you gotta be ready as an offense, certainly, and Canarella wasting no time there, jumping on the very first pitch. Now that brings up Jimmy Obertop, the catcher. That is one thing about Matt Bedford. You know he's gonna throw some strike. He's not walked more than two batters in an outing this year. Only th two walks total over his last three starts. And you saw the numbers against NC State there, but before that against Miami, he had his best start of the season. Four and a third innings, only one earned round allowed in that Friday opener against the Hurricanes a couple of weeks ago. So he's been throwing the ball really nicely before that last start, and he's trying to reestablish that rhythm here today. Checks back to Canarilla at first. Irish out with the shift, bringing Moreno across the second base bag. Find some extra defense to the left side. The only one delivery is swung on and missed. <laughs> Upper top, the transfer from Michigan, used to a little bit of the cold weather just up the road in Ann Arbor. The 0-2 is inside. And used to Eric Bakic, of course, playing for him with the Wolverines. As Eric Bakic in his second year at the helm of the Clemson Tigers. Bedford will check back again. Canarilla is able to get a step back. And really took this Clemson team to a different level last season. One two pitch in the dirt. And talk about a first year. Yeah. You win the ACC tournament. You got to, what goes, where do you go up from there? I know. With, with, with the NCAAs <laughs> and win Omaha. Like, that's where you go up from exactly, there. Exactly. Yeah. Point. Well, they hosted a regional last year and looking like a team that might be hosting a super regional, if not going much farther than that this year. That's a swing and a miss. And Matt Bedford gets the first out of the game for the Irish via the strikeout. Well, Bedford did a good job getting ahead of the count there. And Obertop is someone who is vulnerable to punching out. And Bedford with a nicely located fastball there up and away. Gets a swing and a miss and a big first out. Brings up Blake Wright. Golden Spikes Award midseason watch list member. One of the 45 players listed. And he's been great in the box. Bedford ahead in the count, 1-0 and in the delivery. Healthy hack from right, evens the count at one apiece. Well, when we talk about this Clemson lineup and the power numbers that they've put up this year, I mean, Blake Wright's a huge part of that. Fourth in the, or tied for third in the ACC with 13 home runs, almost, he didn't have a chance to double his career total this season. He had 20 coming into this year. So he's, all away. he's really taken his game to another level this season and slugging almost 700 for this Clemson team just gives you a good indication of how scary he is and what a key cog he is to this Clemson lineup. The 2-1 pitch from Bedford to come. Breaking ball away. As Wright finds himself ahead in the count, 3-1. Still on the shift with Moreno. Across the second base back. 3-1 pitch. Lined to center field. Williams back to the warning track and makes the grab. Two retired now. All right, got a pitch to hit there on 3-1. and one. You could tell it just didn't quite have the right sound off the bat. And it's going to take some serious power today. We're talking about wind that is blowing in today around some strong guests sitting around 
40 miles an hour throughout the day. So it's going to take some power to try once it gets up into that upper stratosphere to try and get it out of the park. So Alden Mathis settles in. Is great job by our production crew. Getting you the directional wind <laughs> to the northwest. Always key. Always key. Got to know where it's blowing. And two teams that like to hit the ball out of the ballpark as well, too. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can adjust if those balls are dying on the warning track that usually would get over the fence. Pitch is low for ball on Mathis. Pitch low again, 2-0. To a pitch. Misses low. Answer the count to 3 and 0 is the Clemson Tigers team, like you talked about. Andrew, that's going to work counts. Sicily make the pitchers work for their strikes. 3 0 delivery is in for strike. The inside part of the plate on Mathis. Well, back to back, 3 1 counts for Bedford. That's not what you want to be doing against the middle of this Clemson order. He got away with it on right, but certainly not an ideal game plan for the Irish right hander. 3 1 popped up and will go into the stands and out of play. Just like that, a 3 0 count now works full. And Canaro will be going on this pitch. So the Irish off, outfielders have to be ready here, but something in the gap, you know, he's going to try to score. Pitch off the plate. And Mathis works a walk. The first base is six, that brings up Jacob Hindelier. Now a runner in scoring position. Early in the top of the first. Transfer from Davidson. Made his impact on this team. Here in his red shirt senior year for the Tigers. Other pitch off the plate for Bedford. Struggling to find the zone here a little bit. Yeah, and a lot of his misses have been in the same spot too, away to right-handers. He's just not been able to find that corner consistently after he got the strikeout going away on overtop. Finds, That's more like it. Finds the zone there. Broadcaster's jinx right there for you, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. But a really important pitch there to avoid a third straight three ball count. Two one will check back as Canarello is able to go back into second, sliding safely. Two one pit from Bedford, chopped over to Bumgart. At third and thrown across the diamond in time. A first year Tiger is Marshall coming over from Woofer, where he was a full time starter the last two years. Has predominantly been used out of the bullpen this season, but that last appearance against Miami was his first start of the year. As you can see, it went pretty well. Four innings, just one run allowed. He's put up really good numbers for this Clemson team, averaging almost a strikeout an inning, and he'll have to keep that going today. He's got a solid defense behind him that, however, isn't one of the best. It commits a lot of errors as they have 34 on the season so far. Yeah, it's been one of the few big weaknesses for this Clemson team. Jimmy Overtop behind the plate has been good at throwing out runners. 
opponents only successful on about 72% of steals. That's the sixth lowest rate in the ACC. So he's been good in that department. We'll probably limit this Irish run game. Their name doesn't attempt to steal a ton of bases, but as you said, Jake, they've made some their fair share of mistakes throughout this season, and it's something that Coach Bakic knows they need to clean up. Williams fouls off the first pitch he sees. They found ways to have their belt bats help them in the long run. Swing and a miss from Williams. Quickly has Marshall ahead at 0-2. Both these teams have found themselves in some chaotic situations. Notre Dame's with their pitching. They've been in a lot of slugfest, especially early on in the season. Clemson have to make up for some of those defensive lapses that they've had as well with their bats. And it's obviously something you not, don't want to be doing over the course of a full season because it's obviously very hard to sustain. So one, two is grounded into the glove of right. Throws across the diamond in time for the first down. But sometimes it is good to find yourself in those situations because you know they're going to come up at some point throughout the year. And obviously, you know, the best teams are often the ones that, you know, know how to overcome adversity and work through those difficult situations. And, you know, every team knows that they're going to need at some point, you know, one unit to carry them or whatnot. And obviously, Clemson would like to limit those mistakes, but they've certainly got a team that can work around them. Clancy turns on the first pitch he sees, sending Mathis to the wall. Mathis at the track, and it's out of here. David Glancy launches one over the right field fence. Irish draw first blood. Second straight game, David Glancy has gone deep. This was a fastball that he goes with, lifting to right field, and this ball just kept tearing off the bat. I did not think this was going to make it out, but it just kept going and going and going and winds up slipping over that right field fence. And Glancy continues his big power year and starts the scoring off today. Connor Hennix now grounds it over to Purify. Slowly. Has a sidearm throw to Hindelider for the second out. I was starting off with some pop off the bat here for the Irish. Yeah. We talk about in the top of the first, and not going to be met. We were wondering if there was going to be any home runs. And well, first inning, we've already got one. Oh, and you got the raw strength that David Glancy has, and he's really showed off throughout this season. Doesn't matter what conditions here, and always a threat to go deep. and after a bit of a power outage throughout most of March. He's really turned things on lately with about four home runs in his last six contests. So good to see him getting that big stroke back. And 10th of the season. For Glancy. Athos had come in a little bit to try and make the play and then as soon as he started to see it keep carrying. Baumgart as it roll over to Chufo and the first. Will Taylor settles into the box. He looks at a strike. Junior ranked the 12th prospect in the ACC to go in the 2024 draft this upcoming year. High chopper. Up over to Baumgart, who throws in time. Well, that's a really tough play that Simon Baumgart made look easy there. Taylor's got great speed, and this was ball was hit very softly, but he fields this hop nicely, cleanly, throwing in one fluid motion. Didn't need to barehand it, but didn't take any time, fielded it chest high, and immediately pulled the ball right out and made a strike of a throw over to first base to cut down Taylor to start this inning. Rockney watches one a mile into the sky to right field. Flores calls off Williams to retire. Going to see Matt Bedford back in the strike zone after some issues with that. Getting behind hitters in the first inning. Two outs on three pitches. I don't think anyone's going to complain about that on the Notre Dame side. 
I think especially Bedford after already has 25 pitches so far and finds himself only in the top of the second, but keep pitching like he has here in this half inning, try and get himself into the dugout in decent shape from a pitch count standpoint. That's the eighth batter, Andrew Trufo, shortstop. Now picks up the bat for the first time today. Tattoos one into the left center field gap. And he'll get down off the hop. Glancy with the strong throw into second. Coming in sliding is Chufro. And it's a double for the Tigers. Well, Chufro, not someone who usually hits for a ton of power. This is just his second double of the season. But got ahead in the count there and got a pitch he liked. And was all over that one, driving it out to left center field. Thrown by Glancy, but had no chance to get the shortstop. And all of a sudden, Clemson in business here with two out. And hitting doubles isn't something the Tigers do all that much. They average 1.36 doubles per game, 14th in the ACC. They find themselves there with one from Trufro to bring up Purify. Penny fields it close to second base. And they leave Chufro at second. Tremendous amount of success with the Wolverines. Started his head coaching career at Maryland. Only won 20 ACC games in three seasons with the Terps. He won 20 ACC games last year with Clemson. And we talked about it, the slow start in conference play last year. And they really turned things around in the second half. Jack Penny pulls one foul and out of play. First time hosting a regional since 2018. First time just making the NCAA tournament since 2019 as well. And for them to get that first stepping stone of postseason success, really important. They obviously bring back a decent amount of pieces. Did lose 75% of their starting infield, but certainly some quality guys back from last year who have that experience now under their belts, and that's only going to benefit them as they look to make another strong run in the postseason this year. Jack Penny looks at a strike. Over the count to one and two. Pitches in the dirt, evening it at two and two. Penny leading the team in walk drawn. Someone that is very selective in his pitches. You can see here as he works the count full. Payoff pitched from Marshall. So once again, foul down the left field line. Yeah, Penny obviously not having the season that he was hoping for coming into the year, hitting only 206 on the year, but he's someone who can work counts and is valuable in other areas as well, too. Obviously, you've seen the defense here transitioning over to shortstop this year, which he's done really well at. Grounded over to Chufro. Deep into the hole, can't get the throw in time. Jack Penny able to beat it down the line. That was a good effort by Chufo, but a really hard play moving over to his right and back into the shallow outfield grass as well. And when you're like Penny, like we said, someone who's struggled this year in terms of getting base hits, sometimes just a seeing eye knock like that can get you going and good hustle down the line to beat that one out. As Bakich will come out to have a conversation with this ACC crew of Adam Dowdy, Travis Carlson, Jake Bodek, and Jose Esteris. They will come together and they'll go take a look. First review of the day comes in the bottom of the second. Here's early for the review. Did not have to wait long. Gonna go use the VAR system. They make a call back broadcast operations Corbett Family Hall on the campus of the University of Notre Dame is looks safe to me. Ooh, let's look safe there. As quickly they're already off the hood. All right. Yep. Yeah, that was about as quick of a review as they can come. First one comes early, but it comes quick. Something that all baseball fans <laughs> love to see. Yeah, Penny was busting it right out of the box. And I, yeah, pretty clearly safe on that play.
much about how Penny can influence other areas as well, too. He's not afraid to run. Six stolen bases on nine tries. The numbers ranked first and, sorry, second and tied for first on this Irish team. Tito Flores. We'll look at a ball off the plate. Mars comes in, back 248 on the season for the Irish. He swings through one, even in the count at one apiece. And so unfamiliar with Eric Bakich as well, another former Michigan Wolverine. He's played some good power during his years in Ann Arbor. Three home runs this year for the Irish. On one, in four. A strike. I was trying to take advantage of Jack Penny, the leadoff batter here in the home half of the second. Him getting aboard. Popped up to the left side of the infield. Jufro calling off Purify and makes the grab by second base. First out of the bottom of the second. Joey Spence. Catcher in today's contest. Settles in. With Penny taking a strong lead off first. That's just the 10th start of the year for Spence, but he set up really good numbers as you see there. OPS well over 1,000. So gets a nod against a righty today. A one. Just off the outside part of the plate. the West Bend, Wisconsin native. Takes a look at another pitch. It's off the plate. Almost a 50-50 split now and starts between him and Carson Tinney behind the dish. Both guys have been very good this year, each hitting 300 or better. Certainly a good problem for Sean Stifler to have. Runner goes, and it's drilled between Purify and Hinderly. And with Penny on the move, he finds himself at third. Runners on the corners for the Irish, and a single for Joey Spence. Well, you know Stifler's going to appreciate that. A perfectly executed hit and run. Looked like a bit of an off-speed pitch there, and a nice job by Spence to stay back on that pitch and pull it through the right side. And with Penny in motion, he's in the third with ease. Josh Hahn, who you touched upon, Andrew, earlier in the broadcast, making his first appearance in a game since March 13th. He's in the designated hitting role today as Obertop comes out to give the signals to the infield. Really had a breakout season last year for UCLA. Hit almost 3.30 a season ago. Fouls one directly back into the netting. Obviously, you saw the numbers there. It's been a bit of a tough adjustment for him in South Bend. Does have three home runs on the year, though. Which isn't necessarily his game with the Bruins, but been able to find some carry when he's gotten in the lineup and in a spot here where just a medium deep fly ball should double the Irish lead. All one misses above the lettering. One and one. Found into the netting again. Talk about taking the most of your opportunities when they're provided for you. 
Han trying to do that here today in the first game of this three-game series. Pitch in the dirt. Two and two. Old starter. Pretty gump to a perfect example of a guy taking the opportunity and using it out of the lineup here today, but the player have on the bench for the Irish as Hahn looks at another pitch and full count here. Got to attack the strike zone here if you're Marshall. Do not want to load the bases up, especially for one of the most potent nine hitters in the country. Hahn goes down looking, and it's a big strikeout for Matthew Marshall. Yeah, just challenged him there with a fastball and had given him that pitch before, but a little off the outside edge. This time he brings it back over the plate, and Hahn unable to get the bat off his shoulder. Now with two outs, that brings up the nine-hole hitter, Estevan Moreno. Just your average nine-hole hitter is hitting over 300 with 650 slugging percentage. Pitch is upstairs on Moreno. You know, third on the team in batting average. Fouls that one back into the padding. Of course, the three career, three home run games. Something only accomplished once before by an Notre Dame baseball player. And he's just a sophomore. On one. Spence was in motion. Foul ball sends him back. Would have been interesting to see there if that might have been a type of play where they were trying to sneak in Penny through the back door if the throw was made down because obviously Spence, as you'd expect from a catcher, not much of a stolen base threat, hasn't attempted one this year. Signals come from Obertop. Trying to make sure his defense is aligned. The one-two delivery in the dirt over top. Able to keep it in front of him. It's a really good block there, especially in this situation with good speed on third base. Especially in this stadium as well as a deep backstop as well. The two-two. It's over top. Has it clipped part of himself. Able to keep it on the infield dirt. Now a full count. Spence able to take second base. Payoff pitch is grounded foul on the third base line. And if that gets scored a pass ball, it's going to be the 10th on Clemson this year, which would be the most in the ACC as a team, and it is. Payoff pitch. Blooped into left field, and it will bounce off the wall. Penny will score easily. Spent into home, and it's a double for Estevan Moreno, and the Irish lead 3-0. Well, with 3-2 to Han, Marshall went with the fastball and got a strikeout. This looked like it was a breaking pitch to Estevan Moreno. And he does a nice job staying back on it, doesn't try to do too much. And winds up shooting this ball all the way to the warning track. Not sure if Spence would have been able to score from first base if he wasn't on second after the pass ball. So that's certainly potentially consequential as well. And Notre Dame able to jump out to a 3-0 lead here. And it brings back the top of the lineup in TJ Williams. Mm -hmm. With a runner in scoring position, Bunt shown. They'll appeal down Travis Carlson, the first base umpire, says he did not go around. Interesting decision there with two outs. We just don't see the game plan here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't see the game <laughs> plan. The 1-0. 
It's held on. Strength nonetheless. I mean, Wright is playing just behind the third base back, so he's not super deep, but it's not like he's playing up either, so. Williams obviously with his speed, always a candidate to beat one out. Williams. Pops it up and onto the press box here at Frank X Stadium. Fans have filed in nicely here. See the second ranked team Clemson in the Midwest. The one two delivery is in for a strike. TJ Williams rung up looking. Actually, they've been in way worse. Uh, but Notre Dame, hey, this is obviously ideal to take the lead for them. Irish not only getting out to an early eat, but then supplementing it last inning with the big two-out hit from Estevan Moreno. It's exactly what the Irish were hoping for, but Sean Stifler and company know that they're going to have to play a full nine innings if they're going to come away with a win in this one. Bedford has a breaking ball pitch. Go way inside. Can Canarella. Now this is the biggest thing you want to look at here, if your Irish fans. How does Matt Bedford deal with the lineup second time through? Long, as long with the Tigers, how do they see Bedford now that they come back to the box after seeing him in one plate appearance? Well, that six pitch second inning really helped him after a bit of a long top of the first inning to start his day. 2-1 is foul down the right field line. And certainly looks like Cantarell is seeing him well. This is the line drive single his first time up and didn't miss a double by much there. Maybe more. The 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. The second strikeout of the day for Matt Bedford. And it comes at taking the leadoff man away. Yeah, some nice move on that pitch off the outer third. And Canarella with two strikes expanding there. The good offering from Bed for that pitch started out looking like a strike and then broke out of the zone away. And Canarella didn't realize it was outside until it was too late. Jimmy over top. Fouls one. Up and out of play. Over top, the other strikeout for Matt Bedford today. A check foul ball for Obertop here. One they want to have back yeah, there. Certainly unfortunate for him, but a good break for Bedford. He's got him in an 0-2 hole just like the first time up. The 0-2 pitch is away with some break. Good 0-2 pitch there from Bedford, trying to see if he could get over top to bite. And over top, someone certainly susceptible to strikeouts. The one earlier today was his 33rd of the season. You know, we talked about this too, Jake, entering play today. Jimmy Overtop almost 60% of it at bats and the three true outcomes. He's got 34 walks as well, plus five home runs. So certainly a new school type of player and on cue, he works the count full. Makes contact. He makes the entire stadium take notice. The payoff pitch. Drilled to center field, Williams back at center and makes the grab to retire. A couple of tough luck line outs for the top of this Clemson offense already today, both to center field. I think Bedford got that pitch just inside enough that Obertop wasn't quite able to barrel it up. But still hit sharply, unfortunately for him, right at the center fielder, TJ Williams. Who Coach Stifler gives high praises to as well as one of the best Stifler believes in all of college baseball in the center field position with his tracking ability coupled with his speed. Well, there's a reason he started almost every single game last year, even before his offense took the big jump. And it's because of that defense and the speed that he brings to this Irish team, a perfect 
So it was perfect seven for seven to start the year in steals. Obviously that speed translates very well to the defensive game in center field where you've got a lot of ground to cover. Blake Wright now in the box for the Tigers as he's ahead in the count. 2-0 and now with a pitch inside nearly clipping the third baseman. Who's the three and a three oh pitch in for a strike on the outer part of the plate. Right, grounds a hot one. Over to Bumgart at third, who throws it across the diamond and through two and a half, the Irish. Against NC State, he went deep. Very first pitch he sees against the Tigers. Takes one deep off of Matthew Marshall and started off this day right for Notre Dame. And the Irish offense has continued to add on since he last came up. Clancy has found his home in the ACC, taking a look at his numbers, which have been so stellar on the weekend. And just looking at some of the recent home run numbers from Notre Dame hitters over the last couple seasons or so. Vince has got a long way to catch Nico Cavadas and his 20 home runs from 2021, but you know, he's got a chance to be one of the most prolific single season home run hitters since the Irish joined the ACC. Last year, Jack Penny and Vinny Martinez were the only two Irish hitters to reach double digits, and he's already hit that threshold this season. So big things from the Irish left fielder. 2-2 pitch from Marshall. Misses, loading the count full. Payoff pitch. Grounded. Tufo takes it to the gut. Strong laser across the diamond to Hinderlier. And one retired. That time Clancy got a little bit pull happy, I think, there. Just looked like he kind of reached for that 3-2 on the outer part of the plane and wound up rolling it over to short. Connor Hennix. Steps into the box for the Irish as Marshall grounds one into the turf. And it's grounded off to purify. Back in the first. Fouls the next pitch he sees up and out of play. A one pitch is tipped foul into the glove of Obertop. Dancing the count to one and two. Slow tapper out into the infield grass. Obertop takes it himself and throws down to first to retire. And a good job by Obertop not rushing that play. He had time down the line. Sometimes you see catchers or pitchers panic when they feel a slow tapper like that, but Obertop was in control and two quick outs to start this inning for Marshall, both on the ground. When he's been successful today, it's when he's been getting ground balls. And two so far in the third. Baumgart has one go foul. Mathis will give it a look. And it'll land in the Tigers' bullpen. A one line right at the shortstop, Andrew Chufo, who drops to a, a knee. After three, I am able to continue last inning, and Sean Stifler has to be really happy about this. And obviously, the pitching has been a struggle for them for most of this season, but Bedford has certainly looked very sharp so far today. 
All the Mathis in the box with the Irish putting on the shift, bringing Penny across the second base bag, putting three infielders to the right side. Bedford ahead in the count. Owen Dewey talk about the efficiency he had back in the third, showing it again here in the top of the fourth. And the Irish going away from the shift now with the 0-2 count, playing Mathis straight up. Pitch into the dirt. Opens up more options as a pitcher too, because when you have that big shift on you, you kind of tend to want to pitch into the shift. As now at regular depth, Bedford can kind of go wherever he wants. Goes high and away this time. Mathis keeps the bat on his shoulder. Two, two. Swung on and missed. The third strike out of the day for Matt Bedford. And he's gotten two of them, especially on some of the top hitters on this Clemson team. Just pulled the string there with a change up outer third of the plate. Mathis way out in front. Talked about Matt Bedford against NC State. Got hit around a little bit. Not the start he would have wanted. But so far today has responded after a full week off. Irish didn't have any midweeks due to the rain and the snow that went through the Midwest earlier this week, allowing a, a big bulk of their pitching staff to have a full week's rest. Well, before that start against NC State, he'd been throwing the ball pretty well. Four of his last five outings before that one had two runs or less. The four and a thirds, he went against the Hurricanes a season high. And Grounder, Hennix bobbles it for a quick sec, but recomposes. Two away. Now with a younger pitcher there, maybe after a rough start like that, you see things spiral potentially. And had another one of those as well too against Virginia Tech when he gave up four runs, only lasted two and a third, but bounced back with two of his better performance of the year against Florida State at Miami and has been fantastic through three and two thirds today. Only 52 pitches as well. well I'll go up against Will Taylor who grounded over to Bumgart in the second. The Irish will bring back on the shift for the righty. Bringing Moreno across the second base bag. Talk about players with great tracking ability. Will Taylor right in the conversation himself as a top outfielder with defensive prowess. Well, someone who's certainly got great hands and experience tracking balls down. Obviously, a former wide receiver on the Clemson football team. Earlier in July, just made the announcement he would focus solely on baseball with how high he's regarded within MLB Pipeline and talked about one of the top 15 prospects in the ACC for the upcoming draft. 2-1. In the dirt, moving to 3-1. I want to talk about the athleticism for not just one sport, but two sports at the D1 level and yeah. at this caliber. Yeah. Thompson plays at both. 3-1 pitch to Taylor is away, and Will Taylor works the walk. Finds himself aboard with two outs. Yeah, certainly not something you see every day to be certain. Notre Dame's had a couple guys like that over the years as well. Pat Connaughton, one who stands out, of course. Not on the baseball diamond necessarily, <laughs> but the hardcore is. Exactly, yeah. the, 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 the dual sport nature. We look at Cole Komet. Yep, uh, absolutely. One of the big headliners. Going off from baseball now, Jordan Faison, of course, who plays yes. football and has been a star for the men's lacrosse team for Notre Dame. What I would give just to have the athleticism <laughs> for one sport, <laughs> never mind two. <laughs> Bedford will check back Taylor, who gets in safely. I'd take it just for like lawn games, honestly. Oh, the like, lawn like, games? Like just for like spike ball, if I, could <laughs> have, if I could have those skills. I would take that, let alone a D1 sport. You a big pickleball guy then? Maybe you could use the pickleball skills? Pitch is low on Iraqi for a ball. See, I would take it for pickleball. Like that's, that's, a good my, one. That, that's my sport that I think most people could play, but you just need a tad bit of athleticism. Exactly, yeah. 
1-0 with his away 2-0. Bedford behind the count here. Two zero is fouled back, and Spence couldn't hold on to it. Well, the changeup's been a really good pitch for Bedford today, and you see it there—the confidence to throw it on two and zero in a spot where you really need to throw a strike. And Rockney did, just barely got a piece of that pitch. It was a really good call and execution by Bedford and his catcher, Joey Spence. 2-1, fouled away, and just like that, Matt Bedford finds himself with the count tied at two. Check back Taylor again, who goes in sliding. Two two is away. They check down on the peel. So he did not go. Full count now. Expect a challenge pitch here, especially with a guy on deck and Shufo who's already got a double today off of Bedford. Runner goes, swing and a miss. A big strikeout from at Bedford, who's pitching a gem through three and a half. Garrett left following the 2022 season, you know, ate up at some of Notre Dame's potential recruits coming into that season as well. The Irish, especially in their offense, have gone really heavy on the transfer portal. They've certainly found some success stories there as well, but obviously, like any coach, Siffler hoping to develop some more young talent for this Irish team and will continue to do so as he gets deeper and deeper into his time in South Bend. Penny drills one to Trufro at short, and it's an out. Here for Marshall in the home half of the fourth. It's nearly identical results today from Jack Penny. One an infield hit, one a ground out, basically in the same spot. It's the beauty of baseball right there, Andrew. Sometimes it just goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. Tito Flores now picks up the bat for the Irish. What's the only thing? It's not how hard you hit him. You just got to hit him where they ain't. Hit him where they ain't. 1-0 is popped up to Chufro again to shortstop as he makes back-to-back putouts and two retired here in the bottom of the fourth. And going back to the start of last thing, that's now four of five balls that have been hit out to him at shortstop. Got the magnet in the glove yeah. right now. <laughs> Joey Spence had a single back in the second. Launches one into shallow right center field coming all the way out to make the grab is Jaron Purify. And it's a one, two. Question, how far will he go? He finds himself with Jufo and Purify, the eight, nine batters along with Canarella do up. Chufo. Looking to go for career high and in innings pitched. Already hit it here today. As it's a liner over to Bumgart, and now he has officially tied his record in innings pitch in four and a third. Looking to try and go for his career best here. Now trying to pick up that second out. And he, he's closing in on his uh, season high as well for pitches two through 67 in that four and a thirds. He worked against Miami a couple weeks ago. Do have some action in the Irish bullpen down there. So obviously throwing the ball very well, but 
Sean Siffler certainly conscious of not wanting to work him too hard, especially with the top of this Clemson order about to come back up. Hardman starting to get some motion. It's the 0-1. Misses off the plate, one and one. The 1-1 one, one pitch off the plate, breaking. Jaron Purify for a ball. Purify grounded out to Penny to end the second. He grounds this one foul by the Irish dugout. One thing Bedford's not been afraid to do in this game is come inside with his fastball. And you saw it right there. Good 2 1 pinch that gets a rollover for a foul ball. He's been really aggressive today. Like we said at the beginning, he needed to throw strikes, get ahead of these Clemson hitters. And for the most part, he's done just that. 2 2. Fouled off of Purify on the ankle guard as he takes the walk around the batter circle. A bit of a chilly day like this, it's going to sting even more, especially for someone like these Clemson players who are used to the warmer weather in South Carolina this time of year. Coming in at 46 degrees here in South Bend. Sun shining, though, that's all you can ask uh, for. It, it's balmy for Indiana this time of year. <laughs> Forty-seven degrees. A wind, though, is what's really getting that feel-like temperature down into the low forties. The two-two misses high and away. Loading the count full. Get a little warmer the rest of the weekend, closer to low fifties. That's what you like to hear. So more, a little bit more baseball weather. The payoff pitch misses inside. It's a walk for Jaron Purify to bring up Cam Canarella. Yeah, not a good walk there from Bedford to the nine hitter after he got ahead in the count, and especially with someone in Canarella who's put up the best swings off of Bedford today. Just tried to go to right field both times. Obviously a single his first step at, just missed a double last time coming up, so Bedford's gotta be conscious of that. Excuse me, obviously one more batter until Camarillo, my, my mistake there, but. Or no, no, I, sorry, my bad. You're right. I, I saw the pop there and I was like, oh man, I must have <laughs> been one spot ahead in my lineup, but. Yes, this is Camarillo hitting. The 1-0 in for strike. Just keeping me on my toes. Gotta stay on him. Once you get feet settled and start thinking you're comfortable, <laughs> wait for it, McGinnis. I might throw you something. I might throw something at you here. <laughs> well, one Bedford will check back. That's Purify. Goes in sliding. That's three for three and steals this year. And he was leaning a little bit, maybe looking to go. Well, one into the dirt. Clemson, he doesn't steal a ton of bases, but it's been a real struggle for Notre Dame to control the running game this year. The Irish have only thrown out one potential base dealer all season long. So we'll see if Clemson gets a bit more aggressive than they normally would. 2-1 is chopped foul. Moving the count to 2-2. Two and two and One thing on the weekend, Scott, you have to imagine. Package. And the Tigers saw was Irish so far inability to throw runners out. Two two. Flirts with the chalk, but goes foul. Just by the bag. We'll do it again at two and two. Obviously with the first baseman holding the runner on there too, if that ball was fair, potentially looking at an ending ending double play. Up 
Two, two, swing and a miss. The fifth strikeout of the day for Matt Bedford. And another one with the changeup. Camarillo, as we talked about, looking to pull a little bit. Gets out in front, swings over the top of it, and Bedford gets a big second out. Now that brings up Jimmy Obertop. As now, Seth Voltz will find his way to the bump as Hardman still working down in the bullpen, getting warm. This is a big spot here. Notre Dame does not want to bring Settles back into the box. That's Purify it goes back in sliding. We saw last weekend with how Sean Stifler deployed his pitching staff. Obviously, the first game against NC State was kind of a wash when Notre Dame lost. Ooh, a close one there. Perfi just getting back in time. But going back to that, after that first game, Notre Dame only used five pitchers total over the last two games of that series, all of them working multiple innings. Except for, or excuse me, nine. Except for Harmon, who pitched one inning in the first game of that series. I think nothing pitch is away. Take a look back at that pickoff. Ooh, good extension with the right hand there. That's why you got that sliding. That's why you got those batting gloves on. There you see that breaking pitch from Harbin. That is his bread and butter. Able to use it at any count there, obviously landing it for strikes and also getting chases on it. 1-1, oh, one, one. we got a pickle coming. Purify stuck between it. And now trying to make the way out and it's the final out not recorded in the batter's box, but on the base pass, the pickle. It's all dilly for the fifth. It was a one, three, four, three, six out there. For all you keeping score at home, just need, need, need to make sure we're providing all our trusty viewers with the necessary information. Just your average day at the ballpark. Yeah, gotta make sure, got him leaning there. But now the Irish picking up the bats here, trying to increase their three run lead here in the home half of the fifth. Andrew McGinnis, Jacob Irons, and our entire outstanding production crew here in South Bend for this three game series. Pitch in the dirt, bouncing onto Obertop's chest. Josh Hahn. Into the box with the 2 2. Looks at another one, and it's back to back strikeouts looking for Josh Hahn. A nice pitch there from Marshall on two and two. Just dropped that one in there, perfectly placed down and away, and Han knew it. That was just a really good pitch from Marshall, and he strikes out Han for the second time today, as you said, Jake. His third strikeout of the day for Marshall. Popped up into the Bermuda Triangle, into foul territory as Mathis calls off Purify and hinder ladder. Always well, important to have the shades on on a day like this. And Mathis did a good job too. He had to use his glove as well to shield his eyes, but was able to make that play. Now with two retired. Brings up TJ Williams. Williams looks at. A ball from Marshall. Two 
2 0 delivery. In the zone for a strike. Between the legs of Obertop as they make the appeal down. And Travis Carlson will say Williams did not go around on it. Ooh, hit him. And it will hit Williams. TJ Williams gets aboard with the hit by pitch. Tried to run a fastball there on the inner third to jam TJ Williams and just came in a bit too far to this Irish team that loves getting in the way of baseballs, Jake. That's the 93rd time an Irish hitter has been hit by a pitch this year, second most in the ACC. They really show the adage of we got ice. Well, they, they lost a two-year starter at Wofford, so certainly experience starting through two complete games last year, so he's used to going deep into contests, but obviously a bit of a new animal for him in terms of ACC play. Clancy swings through pitch he sees. Not the guy you want to be bringing up with two outs, or the guy you want to be putting on base with two outs in a potential steal situation. All one in for a strike. I imagine this is probably a chase pitch down and away after setting him up with the fastball inside. The 0 2. Check back. It's Williams got caught up in the turf there, but with his length, was able to just swim back to the basing. Be able to make a tag on. Well, let's see if Andrew McGinnis or Tony Romo <laughs> next to me makes the right call. O'Till will wait again. Another slide back. Yeah, O2 here. The Williams, obviously, this is a count where a lot of times teams will look to steal the base, figuring that there's not much of a risk if you get thrown out. Worst case, you are thrown out. Glancy gets to start the next inning with a new count, so it would make sense if Williams is looking to run here and Obviously, Marshall trying to limit that. Another check back for Williams, who is all over Marshall here. Oh, two. 2 pitch finally comes home. Runner goes. It's a grounder over to Heinerleiter, who is able to glove it by the bag. In Good job keeping them in check, but obviously a new arm in Nate Hardman. We'll see how he fares. A number. Into the dirt, the Spence have time to throw it. It's not able to beat it. Well, he was going to have time, and then the backsman on that ball just took it right away from where he was going to reach. And Obertop makes the most of it. Yeah, he swung over the top on that pitch and wound up creating quite a bit of backspin on it, and good hustle by the Clemson catcher down the line, and he Legs out an infield single. Liner to Moreno, who takes it himself, and it's the 26th double play of the year for the Irish. Really nice footwork there by Estevan Moreno, getting to the bag and then being able to make a clean throw while still being in motion over to first base, all in one fluid motion, and Exactly what Nate Hardman's breaking ball can do. Two soft ground balls in a row. Unlucky on the first one, but Moreno cleans it up with a 4-3 twin killing. Oh, two retired. Ball in the dirt for Olin Mathis. This looks at a strike. Ball one. See the movement on that pitch there. 
Started well off the plate. Mathis might have given up on it and then winds up clipping in the, for strike two. One two pitch. Runs inside on the cleanup hitter. 0 for 1 with a walk back in the first. Ooh, breaking ball that does not break in and it clips Mathis right on the elbow shield. Now a runner back aboard for the Tigers. Yeah, As now, yeah, just released that pitch a little bit too early, kind of got on top of it and didn't have that same tight spin. As Tim AC Singh. As they will keep Mathis at first base after they'll say it did hit him. Just like that. Andrew McGinnis, two for two today. Yeah. Two for two on the review. <laughs> well, the first one was pretty cut and dry. That one was at least a little bit up for interpretation. Hey, got to got to make contact with, 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 with what's getting hey, the, 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 stat, the stats don't lie. The stats don't lie. Nothing and nothing pitch goes wide on Hinderleiter. Now Hinderleiter is 0 for 2 today, but he has been extremely strong in ACC play. Yeah, not the guy you want to be given a two out opportunity to. ACC play, hitting 361 with three homers, two doubles, 12 RBIs in his nine ACC regular season games coming into this weekend. 1-1, one, one, fouled into the netting. And he's done all that while playing a new position as well, too, at first base, something he'd never done before. Which makes it even more impressive and making the jump to power five play as well, too. Not just picking up where he left off from last season, but getting better as well. His numbers have jumped quite a bit from his last season at Davidson, where he was still very good. Hardman will check back. Mathis. The one two pitch. Flown to center field and will drop. Wynn pushed it into the right center field gap out of the reach of Williams and Flores. Now two aboard here with two outs. Well, the Irish outfield was playing a little bit back. Obviously respecting the power of Hinderleiter and that allows this ball to just kind of dump in in shallow right center, kind of into no man's land. And all of a sudden a two out rally for Clemson here. And this just shows you how dangerous this Tigers offense can be. With that hit by pitch and a single and all of a sudden the Tiger runs at the plate. Ricky Reef starting to get warm in the bullpen here with runners on the corners, Mathis with the speed from first, able to get it over to third. I was just looking for that final out here in this top of the six. Try and get back into the dugouts, increase their lead. Well, the Notre Dame team has been good at limiting wild pitches this year. Only 15 of them. That's tied for second fewest in the ACC. And Hartman doesn't have any, but obviously with that big breaking ball of his, you got to be careful with a guy on third. Don't want to skip one in and give Clemson a free run. Pitch in for a strike on Will Taylor. Oh, one. Goes up and away and out of play. And now Hartman ahead in the count, 0-2. Oh the 0-2 pitch. Drill right back up the middle. 
Mathis will come in to score quickly, rounding second, and coming in sliding will be Hindelider, and runners return to the corners. Well, just an 0-2 pitch here from Hartman that catches too much of the plate, and a really good approach by Will Taylor, who's cut down on his strikeouts from a season ago, punching this one right back up the middle, and three straight reach for Clemson with two outs, and the Tigers are on the board. Coming into the sixth inning, the Tigers had been held hitless going all the way back to the second. Now, with back-to-back -back singles here in the sixth. I'm getting a pinch hitter here and Tristan Bessetta. Bessetta will step in. Set of the red shirt sophomore from Greenville, South Carolina. Looks at a strike. A bat for Narokni here, and obviously get the handedness advantage here if you're Clemson. You also get someone who's been very good with runners in scoring position, hitting 385 in those situations this year. Pitch off the plate, one and one. One one, flown center field. Williams back on it and makes the grab. Tigers get one back, but the Irish are down over these last innings or so, limiting hard contact. And obviously, after the glancy home run, two batters in has kept the ball in the ballpark and really not given up much over these last few innings or so. And buying time for this Clemson offense to creep back into this game, which they took a nice step to doing in the top of the sixth. Connor Hicks. Into the box. Now for the Irish to lead things off here in the bottom of the six. And next, Skies one into foul territory. Right? Chufo and Taylor all gave it a look, but no one could get there in time. And yeah, since that double by Moreno back in the second inning. He is not allowed a hit at all. Just the one hit batsman to Williams in the top of the fifth, or the bottom of the fifth inning, excuse me. So that's 10 of the last 11 he set down in this game. Really impressive. One, two. They'll say Hennex went, and that will be a strikeout. Hennex upset there's no appeal, and Sean Stifler is too. He's exchanging some words right now with the home plate umpire. Ooh, I'm surprised. You, usually in those situations, unless it's really obvious, you're gonna get an appeal, and and especially at the, the ACC level, you have four officials on the base paths. It's not like you have Jose Estreras, the third base umpire, over to second base to make that coverage. She's down the third base line in position to make the call. And Stifler not having Maybe asking him what's for dinner tonight, <laughs> potentially, as he has some choice words for Adam Dowdy, the home plate umpire. Now one out here. And the bottom of the six is Bumgart. Flies that one away. Take another look at it. I, I do think he went. I think it's I think it's the protocol in which Dowdy went about it. Yeah. I would assume argue Stifler. Grounder on a hop to right, who fires in time. The Hindu ladder two away. Yeah, I don't think Stifler's necessarily arguing with the fact that he struck out, but I think he's arguing the fact that Dowdy didn't even give it a look down on the appeal, rang him up himself. Exactly, yeah. I, I think you're dead on there, Jake. Two away in the bottom of the six. With now Jack Penny. 
came around to score after his single in the second, but got it over to Chufo in the fourth. One out, goes foul. That hops in to the ND bullpen. And of course, one of the holdovers from this Notre Dame team that reached the College World Series two years ago. It was a real impact bat as a freshman for that Irish team. Really someone who came on throughout that season, wound up making 18 starts and hit almost 300. 2-1 into Penny, bounces low and retouched upon. Not necessarily a start you would have wanted so far on your junior season. Coming into today, batting 206, and especially after a stellar summer he had up on Cape Cod. Being the East Division third base starting all-star and really put together a strong season as he works a walk here, but he's trying to pick it back up here with the metal bats. Yeah, and one of those people who cares so much that it can sometimes negatively impact you, and that's something that Sean Steffler's talked about with us before is that He's just so committed to trying to be great that when things go wrong, it can be a little bit extra frustrating that he just needs to calm down, take a deep breath, and understand that he's talented enough where if he just keeps putting in the work, eventually things are going to turn around. And hopefully for him, today is the start of that now on base for the second time. Got two arms starting to get warm as Obertop uh, came out to have a conversation with Marshall with five and two thirds pitch so far for Marshall. Having only come in pitching six in two, 16 and two thirds mm -hmm. on the year. And Flores got, looks at a ball. And you've got two lefties coming up after Flores and Spence and Hahn. And we did see a South Paul warming there, so wonder if this is potentially the last batter that he's going to face regardless of what happens. On oh, no, win for strike on Flores. One delivery gets away from over top as runner and Jack Penny comes in sliding and able to go around first base. Jack Penny just getting back there in time. Yeah, just a little indecisive there. If you're going to go on this pitch, you've got to go right away and better throw and tag. He definitely could have been out. Just wasn't a fluid tag there applied by the first base and hinder letter, like we talked about earlier, is new to the position. 2-1. Drilled to right at third. He'll go across the diamond. No double in the second that he's left stranded. As Wreath comes in. A strong strike. No one pitch off the plate. One swing and a miss. There you see the stuff there. Absolutely nasty breaking pitch. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go it again here on one and two. One, two. Flown deep into right field, and Flores on the warning track keeps his feet under him to make the grab. That was a really impressive swing by Chufo. Obviously kind of hard to tell from our bench, but I think that pitch might have been out of the strike zone, and he really did a nice job staying back on it, made the adjustment, and drove that ball pretty deep the other way. I want to retire to bring up Jaron Purify. Big smile there from Tito Flores in right field. Happy he stuck with that one. Kept his feet under him. Penny 
Fields the grounder and fires in time to Hennix. Two retired. What did we just talk about, Jake? Ricky Reith trying to get through these eight, nine hitters cleanly. He needs five pitches to do so and puts him in an ideal spot. As Clemson brings its leadoff man back to the dish. Cam Ganarella had a single back in the first, but has been struck out the last two times he has entered the batter's box. Grounder, back over to Penny again. Backhand gloves, fires, high throw. Hennix keeps it. Carson Tinney. Pinch hitter. For Joey Spence. Tinney comes in, batting a clean 300. Hit he gets hit by a pitch and Lead off man's aboard here in the bottom of the seventh. For all the walk issues that Reed had early in the season, he had not hit a batter before that pitch. Going to go inside with a couple breaking balls. First one just missed. That one did get a piece on the leg. And we're going to get another pinch hitter here for the Irish. Brady Gump getting a chance. Talked about it earlier today about Gump being a good opportunity batter here. As the music was still going for Brady Gump's walk up. Hometown kid. Bombs head coach of the softball program here, winning his coach in Notre Dame history. Deanna Gump is hard at work right now, just yep. across the way. Virginia and Notre Dame doing action over on the softball diamond just a few feet away here on this Friday evening. Gump looks at a strike. So I'm just taking a big step forward for this Notre Dame team this season. A little bit cold lately, only two hits in his last four contests. Irish did not like that call there. Pace that just clips the outer part of the plate. A one two pitch to Gump. Fouled into the netting. Before that. Last cold stretch, though, for Brady Gump. He had hit in six straight. Fouled again. And 12 of his last 13 before that, which really just goes to show you the progress he made. Got off to a, a tough start this season. Only one hit in his first six games of the season. But has really taken big strides here in his senior season. Yeah. Two inside. Another foul. Out and out of play. If you're a pincher here, these long at-bats can be good for you. Obviously, you come in cold, you get to see some pitches here and get more into the game with each offering you get a look at. Payoff pitch. Blooped into right field, and Mathis is there to make the grab. Well, now. Brings up Estevan Moreno for Notre Dame. Moreno had two RBI double back in the second to get the lead to 3-0, which 
Stayed there all the way to the six. Arsenal scoreless. The past four innings. Oh, one with it going up high. To Moreno. Even the count at one apiece. Wall one, and we'll find the gap. Up against the wall, and we'll dribble. Tinney around second, they'll hold him at third. He came firm across the bag, but the throw isn't going to be in time. It's a big double for Estevan Moreno. Two aboard now, and two in scoring position. Well, nice piece of hitting here by Moreno. He kind of inside outs this ball a little bit, but he's got so much raw power that even though it gets inside on him a little bit, he's still able to drive it into the gap in right center field. And Tinney getting a little overly aggressive there potentially, but didn't wander too far off the bag for him to not be able to get back safely. And now a huge opportunity for TJ Williams. Base hit from Notre Dame here would obviously be very clutch and allow them to get some breathing room. Ball one, back into the zone. And Coach Stifler is out of the dugout and will call over his leadoff hitter, TJ Williams. Certainly not something you see very often, especially in a two strike count. I would imagine that, you know, there's. Obviously a squeeze play when he's tight here would be very risky with a two strike count. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Field manager coming out of the yeah. to have a conversation with uh, the batter. Maybe they've got some intel on what Titsworth likes to do with two strikes and just want to remind Williams of that. Obviously in a situation where you do not want to strike out and just putting the ball, the bat on the ball with the infield in, you never know what's going to happen. One, two, swing and a miss. And a big strikeout for Drew Titsworth. Now has two retired with two aboard and scoring. Yeah, got Williams maybe to expand this one a little bit there. Probably too close of a pitch to take with two strikes. But a good fastball with some life on it. A massive second out there for the freshman, and now Clemson can really see its way out of this inning, but still one big out to get. And that big out, it's David Glantz who had a home run in the first. Now batting, and still intentionally walk. I'll give Glancy first base and intentionally walk him to set up bases loaded for Connor Hennicks. Big move here for Bakic. Well, Hinks just two for his last 15, going back to the start of last weekend series against NC State. And obviously we know what Glancy has done today and how hot his bat has been, so. Tigers maybe playing the matchups here a little bit, trying to find their way out of this. I know. Hinks fouls into the parking lot. Frank X Stadium. Does put some extra pressure though on a freshman pitcher because now you have nowhere to go. Walk does force in a run in this situation. Obviously a lot of trust on Titsworth. He's been very good at throwing strikes this season when he's needed to and certainly a big spot to do so here. Just missing there. Oh, the count to two and one. Two one pitch inside again. Now three and one. Nowhere to put him. Bases loaded. Fans starting to get into it. Great battle brewing. The three one pitch. 
and it's fouls away. A full count. Well, nothing better than this, Jake. Base is loaded. Full count, two outs, everybody going. Chance for Notre Dame to break this open. Chance for Clemson to gain a lot of momentum here. Payoff pitch. Hennix fouls it back in. We'll do it again. Got to go to the same pitch he struck out Williams with. Up and away fastball. Obviously different spot, different side to a lefty in. Hinks gets a piece. Pittsworth. Hinks. Payoff pitch, runners go, swing and a miss! A huge strikeout for Drew. Swing and a miss from Obertop. Well, just seven pitches in that seventh inning for Ricky Reith, and he went one in his first outing of this year against Rice. He's going at least two in every one since. A liner that sneaks by Moreno and Penny. Gets Obertop aboard and the leadoff man here in this eighth inning. And so I'd, I'd imagine the plan for Sean Seffler is that hopefully Reith can finish this game out. But this Clemson lineup can change plans very quickly and a nice piece of hitting there even with three defenders on that side for Notre Dame. Ball just finds a hole and it puts the tying run in the batter's box and in quite a formidable presence in Blake Wright. Pitch misses away. Ball gets away from Tenney. Honors move. And Obertop into scoring position. I would imagine now the emphasis even more comes to trying to pitch him inside. Not only do you have three defenders on the third base side of second base, but obviously a ground ball over to that side would keep Omer top put and not allow him to advance to third. A little too far inside there though. Now Reith behind of the count. Three and oh. Rio finds the black. Some action in the Irish bullpen as well here. 3 1. And for another strike, and Wreath is battled back. Load the count full. Right fouls it into the netting. Well, he's got him set up nicely for that breaking pitch, but the question is, does he feel comfortable and can he throw it for a strike? Because you don't want to go too far outside the zone here and risk a walk because there's still a lot of talent behind right. Payoff pitch, line into left field. Glancy won't be able to get there. Overtop is brought in to come in sliding. It's a run-run game here in the top of the eighth. Well, he went to the breaking ball, but instead of trying to lean him away, he tries to backdoor it, and a really nice swing by right, driving this ball out to left field on a different day with maybe a bit stronger wind. That ball might have had a chance to get out, but it'll certainly settle for a huge double and two straight hits plus a wild pitch. Clemson right back in this ball game with a tying run 180 feet away. Tigers looking for their 15th come from behind victory. of the year is going to get another another meeting. Backets will come out of the dugout and call over. Line right up to Penny playing for the shift. Now one away. Well, that was a really nice play by Jack Penny. This ball takes a nasty hop on him just before it gets to him. And he skips off the mound there and then the short hop. 
And you gotta have really quick hands to make that play and prevent that ball from kicking off you and potentially, depending on the angle, going into center field and tying this game up. So, you know, it might go down as a simple 6-3 run out, but that was quietly some really nice work by Penny. But Clemson will certainly take that now. They've got right at third with only one gone. We'll bring the infield in. As Hindeliner turns on it, but it goes foul. And Think he was sitting breaking ball? I think so. <laughs> I think I can say that confidently. Enderliner trying to bring in Wright, who stands 90 feet away from home. The 0 1 pitch upstairs. 1 and 1. You do have first base open here, and obviously Will Taylor on deck is talented, but when a lower average is on this Clemson team, not to mention a walk wouldn't set up a potential double play at least, which I argue makes it easier to get out of this inning. So you don't have to be super aggressive here if you don't want to with Hindelider. 2-1, swing and a miss. But if you're gonna get a swing like that, you'll certainly take it. Two, two. Blooped, just foul. Floor and with the foul line in right field. Nice piece of hitting there, made the adjustment on a second straight off speed pitch. And maybe a foot or two away from tying this game up. Two-two pitch. Popped up. Into shallow right field. It'll drop and bounce away from Flores who had to come in running. And it's a tie ball game. Infield playing in. Just the perfect pop fly into shallow right field. Allows the tires to take advantage and tie the game at three. Yeah, you said it, Jake. It's a really tough play for Moreno. It would usually be pretty routine, but he's trying to make a Willie Mays style play on this. And I think Flores got a little scared of a collision there. He might even be able to get to this ball if he wasn't worried about bumping into Moreno. But this Clemson team finding a way to put the ball in play with two strikes into lighter. Certainly not the ideal swing, but the ideal result. And Clemson once again clawing back late in a contest to draw even for the first time since Notre Dame's first batter in the bottom of the first. Will Taylor now with another runner in scoring position here. Tigers have already responded for two. They'll check back and it's an errant throw into center field. But Hinderleiter in no move. Just one, just a mistake you could could have turned costly, but. Yeah, Fort Notre Dame was very fortunate that he dove back into the base, expecting to have to worry about a tag. Because if he was still on his feet there, he's in the third base easily, especially with how deep G.J. Williams is playing. One, one. Flown to right field. Floor is back at the track. It's a home run. Will Taylor and the Clemson Tigers open it up for four runs here in the top of the eighth and complete a huge turning of the tides. When we talked about how the average is a bit down for Will Taylor this year, but the power numbers are still there. And Ricky Reed just went to this breaking ball one time too many. Left this one a little bit up, out over the plate, and a great swing by Taylor. He doesn't try to pull it, he goes with it. And give Clemson its first lead of the game. His sixth home run of the year and gets the handshake. This Tiger team can never 
be counted out. On one that's swung through by Vesetta. It has the ball run inside. That's now four straight games for rookie Reith and he's given up a home run. Grounder over to Hinks. Steps on the bag two retired now. For this Irish pitching staff as well overall. 43rd home run allowed. That's the most in the ACC. It's been a big problem for them all season long. Came in today, 12th in ERA at 6.7. Another liner that will drop in in front of Flores, and the hot bats continue for the Tigers. Second hit today for Chufa, the shortstop. Let that ball get deep and be able to get the bat around on it in time. See if he goes here with two outs. Five for seven on stolen base attempts this year. And with two outs, certainly would not be a surprise. Reese checks back. Chufo goes in safely. Purify looks at a ball. Oh, they'll walk back. Get back in safely again. Grounder over to Bumgart. Throws it across the diamonds, but it's four runs in the top. For the Tigers find themselves a top by two. Bumgart gets it going to try and respond for the Irish. Playing also works a little bit of a sidearm release. Not a full sidearm, but a little bit of enough there to throw off the batters a little bit on the release. Coming across the plate in for strength there. A lot of different looks on this Clemson pitching staff that they can give opposing offenses. And it's part of the reason why they've had so much success as a staff. Well, one drilled into the gap between Purify and Hinderleiter. And Irish get the leadoff man aboard. Well, nice job by Baumgart. He let that ball travel a little bit and showed off his raw power there by he's still able to go the other way with it. That's what really good hitters are able to do. They're able to let balls get deep. And then, you know, even in a spot like that where it's a pitch more in the inner third, they're still able to get some good wood on the ball and a big lead off base runner here for the Irish. Jack Penny deep into the right center field gap that Camarilla calls off Mathis to make the out. Good swing there by Penny who's had some really good at bats today. And, you know, only one hit in this contest, but I think if you're Notre Dame, you have to be satisfied with the uh, bats he's had throughout today and hope that this is something that can help jumpstart him. Tito Flores. Grounder that goes foul. Flores, 0 for 3 today. Try and crack in, pitch inside, and they count at one apiece. And off to a really good start in his Irish career. Back at the start of this season. Has struggled a bit of late. 
two hits in his last 14 at bats, both coming last Saturday against NC State. Why not rediscover that power stroke that was so prevalent for him early in the season? 2 1 is flown foul and out of play. He came close to doing it right there, just a little out in front. And starting to make that gust back over, going from left field to right. Two two pitch, quick snap throw down. Bumgard's able to get back in safely. Payoff pitch to come. Grounder foul again. Walks have been a bit of an issue for Clayton. He's issued nine and now 13 innings of work on this season. And certainly a spot here. Late innings in a tight game where you do not want to be giving the opposing team anything easy. Clayton deals. Blooper that gets over the head of Chufo and Wright. And now two aboard for the Irish. No, he didn't give him anything easy. Got the ball over the plate and did not give up hard contact. Unfortunately for Clemson, this is just a little flare from Flores that, you know, like the pop-up that tied the game for the Tigers in the top of last inning is just able to find grass. And for Notre Dame, some life here with a couple of singles. And Irish going to go to another pinch hitter here, getting that righty-lefty advantage back. and. Seeing if DM Jefferson can spark some magic off the bench. This time will be called here for the Clemson Tigers as conversation will begin to happen on the bump once everybody gets out to the mound. I would have, there is some action now, but I would imagine this visit is as much as about getting a scouting report on Jefferson to Clayton to making sure he's aware of how the Tigers want to attack the Irish pinch hitter. Just responded for four, top of the eighth. Last thing you want to do is try and give away a run, but the Tigers will make a call to the bullpen and will be right. Steps into the lefty batter's box. Try and create some havoc. Jefferson grounds it to Chufo. Glove flip up to Purify. And gets one. Oh, two are tired. Well, nice glove flip by Chufo, knowing with Jefferson Sweden where that ball was hit. They were going to have to be absolutely perfect to turn two. And a really good effort there from the Tigers, but unfortunately. Purify was just not able to get the ball out of his glove cleanly and with the speed of Jefferson, any hesitation going to give you just about no chance. And so the IR is getting a little bit of a second life in this eighth inning. Brady Gump now into the batter's box who fouls one off. Jefferson obviously with great speed on first base. It would be very risky to send him here. You don't want to run yourself out of the inning, but if you're able to get into second base, obviously that would move the tying run into scoring position. So it's something to think about. There. Jefferson thought about. Yeah, he started going. and stopped. Damn Jefferson, five for five. Stolen bases here on this 2024 season. One-one pitch. Gump. 
Swings around on. He's behind on the count. Wonder if you might send him here with two strikes now. One, two, swing and a miss. Clayton picks up a big strikeout. An Irish lead. Well, you got to give Clemson credit. They have been poised this entire game. Even in the middle innings when the bats were really quiet, and you could just sense from their dugout that there was no panic. They've known they've been in this situation plenty of times before. They feel comfortable in it. And obviously coming through in that eighth inning. Yeah, they caught some breaks. Obviously that pop fly that wound up dropping in a shallow right field. But that's what good teams do. You know, every team is going to get a couple breaks. It's the really good teams who are able to capitalize on those. And Clemson did so with the big go-ahead home run. That was driven the other way by Will Taylor. And that's the reason they're in front right now. Wraith can't find the zone as he's behind 3-0. It's a four-pitch walk to Cam Canarella. Well, obviously, this Clemson offense is going to get their flowers for this comeback, and deservedly so, especially if they're able to hang on. But you know, you have to give some credit to the pitching staff as well, too. You know, we saw the start today from Marshall, wondering if he was going to be able to go deep in this game. He winds up giving Clemson six innings of just two-run ball. And then how about Drew Titsworth, the freshman, with the bases loaded in the seventh inning, Notre Dame up two. Chance to really blow the game wide open. He works out of the big jam. And then the offense for the Tigers scores four the next inning. Fly ball in the right field floor. He's giving it a look. It's going to make a mad dash. And it's out of here. It's a fair ball just hooking down the line. And it is all Tigers. A two-run shot from Jimmy Obertop. Wow. You are not going to see many home runs that look like this, folks. We kind of saw this with David Glancy in the first inning when he went the other way. I mean, this ball gets in on the hands. This is a good pitch made by Ricky Reeve. And look how much the wind grabs this ball. I mean, Flores runs a good 30 or 40 feet over to his right from where he thinks the ball might initially land. And it just sneaks inside the foul pole for what feels like the dagger for this Clemson offense. Big home run for Obertop. His six of the year. And now another ball thrown by Reith. Has some action in the bullpen here. And we've got a lefty going for Notre Dame right now. I think it's Ryan Lynch who's getting loose for the Irish. Right, lines one right to the diving Glancy who's able to make the grab. That ball honestly might have been hit better than the one that just went out a moment ago. I mean, that was on a nose and just hung up, and Glancy was able to stay with it and to go to his knees to the last second. Glancy just continues to impress for this Irish team, both offensively and defensively. It's Mathis back with the bat. Two one is fouled into the netting. Two and two, excuse me. Lined over to Glancy, who makes the move off to his left side to make the grab. Back to back outs. To Glancy with the magnet in his glove. Well, obviously this game is still not set in stone yet, certainly, but if this score holds, I would imagine that for Sean Stifler and his team, this would be one of their toughest losses of the season. I mean, you have a chance 
You get a signature win over this Clemson team. You jump out to a big early lead. You hold it into the late innings. You've got some of the arms you, you trust the most on the mound for you in these late innings. And, you know, some unfortunate results too as well. We talked about the jam shot pop up as you know, another base hit here. And Hinderleiter is able to get out of the reach of the diving Penny as he is slow to get up. But you get a pop-up essentially that winds up tying the game because the infield is in and the wind is blowing. And it turns an almost, uh, what is usually going to be an ordinary play into an almost impossible one. And the next batter hits a home run, then you give up a wind-blown home run, certainly at least a wind-aided home run in this inning that really puts it out of reach. And with the struggles that Notre Dame has had in ACC play, you see the record there. It certainly feels like this is an Irish team that has the talent to be much more than 2-10 and ten in conference play. But as the saying goes, you are what your, rec your record says. And this Notre Dame team has unfortunately just struggled to find traction in conference play this year. They've played teams close. They had an opportunity. Well, I will check back into Ladder, who's able to go in sliding. Bunt shown from Taylor. Pulled it back at the last second, but clips the bat just enough for the foul ball. Well, Taylor's got some great speed on him. Can use a small ball. I think Baumgart just took a few steps in. Now he's even with the bag over at third. Honestly, you could argue the argument that here, if he's bunting, he should try to go for a push bump without the defense line with three guys on the second or the third base side of second. A one. Comes into the zone and now Will Taylor behind in the count. Solid day for the junior. 0 2, runner goes. High ball throw down. They got him. Just the second caught stolen base for the Irish, but they're going to need four in the bottom of the ninth. As the Clemson Tigers bench came out to make the call for a challenge, and we're taking a review with it right with the umpires here, and it looks to be a great throw from Linda Weddell, and Gloves making the applied tag there, and should end as top of the ninth. We'd have to imagine. I know you called it. You're saying you're trying to go three for three here on your replay reviews. Well, it was a perfect throw by Tony Littlewood who came into the game after Notre Dame used, starting with uh, Spence at catcher today, then Carson Tinney came in to pinch hit, then Jefferson pinch hit for Tinney. And so that's why Littlewood in the game right now. It was a beautiful one hop throw. The only thing you could argue from that angle potentially is that you can't tell if the glove is on the leg or not. But we saw another angle just before that that I was pretty sure that he got the tag down. And obviously the call on the field was out. So it's going to take inconclusive or conclusive video evidence that the tag was not applied to overturn this. And we're going to get a ruling here. They'll make their jog out. They will stay with the call as we'll send you back to another break for runs are needed. in so. If there's any trio that can start a big comeback for the Irish, it's the three they've got starting off the ninth here. Pitch in for a strike from Gordon. A one delivery, lined up the middle. Purify was playing the shift. Strong throw from the second baseman. And a good job by Purify there not to panic. He took an extra step back to make sure he filled that ball cleanly, knew with how hard it was hit. He wasn't going to have to rush his throw. And rather than trying to take a bit of an in-between hop, he makes sure he fields this cleanly and gets it over in time for out number one. Williams looks at a strike. A 
ball one. They'll check down, and Travis Carlson, the first base umpire, will say he went around. 0 oh, 2. Swing and a miss. Well, you can tell Gordon's in a rhythm right now, just working so quickly there and absolutely fooled Williams with his 0 2 curveball. David Glancy now. Looks at a strike and Marsh with two outs, gonna need to try and find four runs to try and push it to the 10th. Healthy swing and miss from Glancy and Gordon is ahead 0-2. Cleaning of the plate here. And then another visit with an iron shitter. From Coach Stifler to come out. Yeah, Gordon though, he, he's locked in right now. Hasn't even left the rubber. He's still staring. Ready to throw this ball now if they let him. He is, he is ready to go. He's like a statue right there. Look at this. I don't think he's blinked. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> wow. That. Sign of a confident pitcher right there. That's a really good sign for this Clemson team after the struggles he had early in this season. 0-2 oh, pitch from Gordon. Ooh. That's outside. I mean, he's not even letting the pitch clock get down to single digits, really. One, two, upstairs at 93. Two, two, grounded over to Hindenleiter, who steps on the bag, and it's the 15th come from behind victory for the Clemson. Yo, in the battle within the fight, we can't ignore Against our own demons on the internal war From the dust that plague us to the fears that bind We're in that constant struggle in the depths of our mind The voices of insecurity, they scream so loud But we'll drown them out with our courage proud Through the trials and tribulations We'll stand tall in the face of adversity, we'll never fall It's a struggle within, against our own doubts But we'll fight through the darkness and find our route In the battle against ourselves, we'll find our might In the merge, victorious, in the shining light It's a journey of self-discovery A quest for truth to break free from the chains of our own youth We'll push beyond limits and reach for the sky In the fight against ourselves We'll never say die through the ups and downs We'll persevere, overcoming obstacles without fear For the greatest battle we'll ever face Is the one within, in this human race It's a struggle within, against our own doubt But we'll fight through the darkness and find our route In the battle against ourselves we'll find our might and emerged victorious in the shining light. So as we face the challenges that lie ahead, let's remember the strength that lies within instead. For in the fight against ourselves, we'll find our truth. And in the struggle within, we'll find our youth. Yeah. In the melody of life, let's take a stand against our own demons hand in hand. For in the battle against ourselves, we'll rise and conquer our fears, reaching for the skies. <laughs>